Sorry, we're closed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Episode 91, sorry we're closed. I'm your host, you know who I am. And guys, this might be the most excited podcast I have done since I've started the podcast game. Uh, way back in August, I think, or late July was my first, my first ever episode. And I can't remember a more exciting episode than the one we're about to do right here. I don't know how long it's going to be. It could be two minutes. It could be 90 minutes. Uh, it's definitely not going to be 90 minutes. But it, it, listen, what has taken place here in New Jersey uh, this past Monday has got me more excited than anything that could possibly have gotten me excited uh, in the history of time. And, and that is we are back, ladies and gentlemen. The bar scene is back. The restaurant scene is back. I and mean, I know people have differencing of opinions as far as what exactly we should do, um, whether it's, it's the right time to bring it back, whether it's not the right time. But let's take a moment to take get away from that, get away from the what you think should be done, what you don't think should be done, whether you think we should be open you know, seven months ago, whether or not you think we shouldn't be open for another seven months. Let's just take a step back, right? It started last March with a shutdown. Actually, my, my mayor here, Mayor Ravi Bala, uh, shut us down, um, right? It was like the weekend after, we didn't, I don't think we got St. Patrick's Day. It was like right before St. Patrick's Day, shut us down. I actually remember laying in bed, it wasn't out on Saturday night, and I remember laying in bed and getting the word from some people that I had connections with. And I then called my, my manager that was on and a partner of mine who was on at the time and said, pack the place, get as much money as you can tonight. We're being shut down tomorrow. And it was, again, I can remember it as vivid as it was yesterday. It was over a year ago now. And I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be crazy. Holy shit, we're about to lose March Madness. You thought it was only a couple weeks, maybe. Turned into, if you talk about full go, turned into over a year of restrictions and shutdowns. And then we flash forward, flash forward from that March thing to April. April, and pretty much all of the summer. We talk about getting, you know, starting to fight with the landlords, right? You know, bills are zero, right? You know, the PSE&G, or which for New, is New Jersey folks is electric and, and gas and all that, that's pretty much zero. You know, we're not really running a business, and you start fighting with landlords now. Now everyone's, everyone's, you know, battling with their landlord on do they owe rent, do they not owe rent. We, weren't the, we were the same here at Green Rock, we're same at Saku Uptown. You know, everyone was in that same boat fighting and, and saying, what do we have? Um, and what can we give? What do we owe? All of those things. A fight out, you know, breaks in. Then the government lets us open and they, they tris- transition our drinks or our liquor license to to-go drinks. I remember sitting out in the hot summer sun uh, with friends, sometimes family, sometimes my girlfriend, sitting out there and just or, and, and making to-go drinks, sell, trying to sell hats. Do anything to stay open and bring some money. I remember we'd bring like maybe a hundred bucks in, and it would be unbelievable that we did that much money uh, on a Saturday night or a Friday night. Uh, it's crazy to think about. And then shutting down the place after, let's say, after seven o'clock when it really starts to slow down, and you know, and then going in and having our own party, having a few drinks, talking about how crazy this is. I can't believe we're not open yet. Will we be open for busy season, which is the fall here at Green Rock? Will we not be open? Will there be restrictions? What can we do if there if we aren't open? So on and so forth. Flash forward to the fall, and we're doing outdoor stuff. We're, we're having parking lot parties every Saturday and Sunday. Um, we start having minimal uh, allowances indoors, so we have you know a little bit of people coming in after the parking lot parties. And an absolute shit show nightmare. We're having minimums at tables. We were doing thousand, fifteen hundred. I think we were doing thousand dollar minimums at the tables, or eight hundred dollar minimums at the tables, because each person has spent eight, a hundred bucks, and we're only about eight people. Trying to do anything we can to make some money here, um, because you can't. And people were mad at us. I remember people being furious at us about these minimums. And I, and listen, you don't get it. And my, and people still probably will get mad at me for having done those minimums, but. At the end of the day, if you are going to come in and really you're just looking for a chill day to spend, a, spend a, you know, maybe 50 bucks on a corona, on a couple of coronas and some white claws and hang out for a couple hours, 
I can't afford you to do that. It's no longer business as usual where I can just sit there and be like, oh, don't worry about it. Enjoy yourself, man. I'll put the people other people. I need every table to absolutely maximize how much money I can bring in so I can pay rent, so I can catch up on back rent. I was thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in debt to my landlord because we couldn't pay rent in the summer. I was making, you know, I was doing, you know, three hundred dollar weekends, and my rent is is well well higher than that uh, here at Green Rock. So it's 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 crazy what we had to do and do it throughout the entire fall with these with these. I remember wanting to do a reality show and being like the the shit show you that you guys would have been able to tune into. We just needed a bigger we needed a camera crew. We needed a lot in order for it to work. I just didn't work. Uh, but we had uh, drama after drama, people quitting, people people being pissed at me. I was getting yelled at after shifts. It was insanity, guys. Absolutely insanity. Then the winter approaches, right? I feel like I, I feel like I uh, uh, Game of Thrones. I actually think I did a, um, a a podcast called "The Winter Is Coming," right? And it's because we weren't sure the outside was no longer useful. I wasn't going to spend thousands of dollars on heaters that were only going to be able to make someone warm if you're sitting directly underneath it in the dead of winter. I didn't want to do igloos. I didn't want to, you know, it was the outside was coming to an end and we were at 25% capacity indoors. I absolutely could not make rent if I didn't have an, a, you know, a higher occupancy. I think sometime in November, they increased it to 50% occupancy, did a little bit of fun there, was able to kind of start generating some money, start generating some money. And then we get to that 50, I think we end up getting 75 and so on. And now with the spring coming back, May, let's see, what is it? Today is the 26th, 27th, 28th. May 28th, we will be back to a normal bar. I don't have to worry about you having a table to come in. When I have a few buddies outside that want to come in, I don't need to worry about you know finding putting a table in some random spot in the restaurant to get them into the bar. I can just let them in. And then, you, know, you can order from the bar. We're going to have three bartenders up front, one bartender in the back, two servers running the show on the floor. You know, we have a normal restaurant, and it's exactly what we need. And I can tell you right now, guys, when I bought this bar in September of 2019, I did not think that six months later we'd enter a pandemic. It's absolutely ludicrous and insane that this happened. Um, and again, I'm not telling you, you know, whether or not I agree with all the restrictions or not. I don't really know. I, I wasn't the one doing these things. But let me tell you guys, running a bar through a pandemic is, is insane. Listen, we ha- I was fortunate enough to have a good bar, a place that I knew would bounce back once the pandemic was over. So I was willing to put more money in. I was willing to do things to make sure the business stayed alive because I knew that I would make it back in the long run. It was worth it to me. But it was insane, guys. Fighting with partners, telling people that, you know, trying to finagle, you know, I used to fight with my landlord. I told you that from April to the summer and then a little bit in the winter. And now, you know, we're good friends. You know, you know we want to do more business together because of how things were handled throughout this pandemic. Uh, the, the, the opportunities that this has created. I told you guys last episode, I just bought another bar. There are other bars that are possibly in the works for me that I may or may not do. I'm just not ready to announce yet because I'm not sure that I'm going to do them. There's just infinite things that have happened during this pandemic and i'm going to come out green rock's going to come out on the other side much better off than they would have come you know if they if if we didn't do the pandemic which is crazy to think about and i'm not hoping that the pandemic happened i'm not hoping for the the you know thousands and thousands of people that died across the country and across the globe but what we did and this is what business is yeah, he got hit with a major, major roadblock, a major, major thing, and we're going to come out the other side better. We're going to have the parking lot next year in the fall. We're going to have the indoors full go in the fall. We're going to have these things that now allow us to do more business than we've ever done before in the history of Green Rock and the history of these other restaurants. We're going to be, we're going to come out the other side much better and. Listen, I'm excited. I'm excited to have bought McSwiggins. I'm excited to have bought Green Rock when I did, even though it was a pain in the ass to run through this thing. The amount of things I learned, the amount of business relationships I've, I, I've you know, been able to accumulate throughout this pandemic um, and just overall business knowledge. It's, it's crazy what all this has done. It's absolutely insane. Uh, I can't I can't imagine having to do this again. Obviously, it'd be a much better scenario. I'll be a little bit better positioned uh, to, to do this again. But it's crazy. And I could cry 
I'm so happy that this Friday I get to run a Nolan bar. I think Friday, maybe Saturday will be a little bit crowded. It's Memorial Day weekend here, so we're going to go down the shore. I'm going to be down the shore Saturday, Sunday, and Monday um, having some fun. My first shore down, my first uh, Memorial Day weekend down the shore, which will be really cool. Uh, but it, it's, it's like a weight has been lifted off, not in my shoulders, my chest. I can breathe again. I, I don't have to worry, you know, in, just so you guys know, in a normal bar situation, I have to worry about my bartenders being in the right spot to make as much money as I can. I got to worry about fights, but I let my bouncers really do that. And I have to worry about occupancy. That's the only two things I have to worry about, really, my, my bartenders and my occupancy. Or, when you get to a point in the evening, the bartenders kind of run themselves. So it, it, it kind of goes away. It's really only have to worry about occupancy. During pandemic times, I had to worry about how many tables I had. Were they social distance? How many people were at each table? How much was there a line outside? Was there not a line outside? I didn't want to keep a line because you couldn't social distance it. You get in trouble. People would take pictures. Are the is the ABC is the fire marshal coming around to check these rules? Are people going to the bar to make, to make a purchase when they're not allowed to go to make a purchase at the bar? Is my staff on top of that? Is my staff being put in the right position to make as much money as they can? You know, is my occupancy lower than it would be, which really wasn't that much worrisome because with tables, they were it was always, you know, lower than it needed to be. You know, all of these things combined and there was zero tolerance for fights. We absolutely could not have them. It was it, I'm telling you guys, it was it was absolutely insane. And I don't I really don't wish this upon anyone because it was an absolute shit show. But it is absolutely as as awesome as it can be to be back and not have to worry about it and just be ready to go and, and, and make some more money coming to Green Rock and get ready for the summer, get ready for the fall next year. It's it's so nice. I, I You won't see me in a better mood than if you show up to Green Rock this Friday. You just won't. You will, you will not see me in a better mood than this Friday at Green Rock because it's just going to be a breath of fresh air. I'll be able to hang out, be able to be a little bit more relaxed, let people do their work, their jobs, their work. It's just going to be absolutely delightful. And I look forward to every freaking second of it. <sighs> in other news, I really don't have much other news. The Red Sox are playing a little eh, not loving the way they're doing it. The one thing I wanted to touch on for, for parents out there and kids that might be listening about baseball stuff – do not take advice from lifting it from these Bryson DeChambeau uh, videos that have gone viral about him doing curls. There is no physical benefit to them, not at least that I can see. He's not really curling. He's really doing like a weird curl shoulder shrug. But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of kids are going to see this and be like, oh, I'm going to try and max out my, my curl, which really doesn't do it, especially specifically for you pitchers out there and any baseball players in general. You know, your biceps being really big doesn't really do much for you. I mean, look at look at um, look at John Carl Stan. Although he's a phenomenal home run hitter, guy can't swing his bat. He swings his bat like a lumberjack. Uh, so, listen, please don't take that as a as a as a thing you should be doing. And the other thing I want to show, if Randy can bring it up right now for all you YouTube folks, but the the meme that Tom Brady just put out of Aaron Rodgers, it was um, Bryson DeChambeau walking past. Everyone's making memes of these right now. Bryson DeChambeau walking past. Um, oh, what's the guy? What's that golfer's name? Hey, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. And he's talking. It was, um, you know, what's his face being very disappointed. Being he was the Packer or he was Aaron Rodgers, and Bryson Shambo was kicking a field goal down seven. Uh, I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Love that kind of content from Tom Brady. Um, just awesome all around. Because I could talk forever. Because I'm so happy about this freaking Friday. I cannot wait. Dollar beers from 5 to 8 on Friday. That'll be fun. I'll be able to let loose there. People want to sit down. And then on top of it, just absolutely letting loose. Uh, and hopefully everyone has a phenomenal night. No fights. Just a ton of fun uh, for this Friday. And, and also make a little money. So, guys, I hope you have a great weekend. If you are in New Jersey and you are going to a bar, enjoy yourself. Have a great time. Um, you were, It's well, well deserved. And if you're, if you're at Green Rock Friday, I'll see you there. If not, and, I, and you're down the shore, I'll see you there during the weekend. I don't know where I'm going. I know I'm going to Red Rock, though, in Red Bank. Um, on Sunday uh, because uh, my buddy owns that bar and they have a great cover band playing uh, Sunday night. So uh, enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all the veterans out there. Um, and, and guys, uh, again, enjoy your weekend. And for the first time, that really feels good. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Thank you so much for listening to the Sorry We're Closed podcast. 
Go subscribe to our email chain over at thepatlight.com and follow us on all social media. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Sorry, we're closed.